So we're getting closer to the one year anniversary of Sonic Frontiers, and it's still going strong. The game is still actively getting post-launch support through free content updates, improving the base game. But even with those improvements, there are many aspects of Frontiers that just can't be fixed in a simple content update. The formula of Sonic Frontiers has a lot of potential to be something truly amazing, but as of now, I don't think there are much more improvements that could be made to the core of the game. So of course, that just begs the question, will Sonic Frontiers ever get a sequel that improves these aspects? And if it does, then what needs to be improved? Alright, let's get into it. Starting with the big one, the open zone. This is the main part of Frontiers and where you're going to be spending most of the game. We all know how it works by now, you run around these giant islands collecting memory tokens to progress the story, and fighting bosses to get portal gears, which in turn gives you chaos emeralds. Then you fight the big boss at the end and then you repeat the whole cycle. Yeah, that's really it. A lot of the open zone stuff feels pretty much the same if you ask me. Memory tokens are found on these mini platform obstacle challenges that are found throughout the islands, and they're just kind of there. They don't blend in with the environment whatsoever. And they all pretty much work the same. You hit a spring or booster that launches you into the obstacle challenge, run through it, and collect your memory token, which only takes a few seconds for each challenge. I'll admit, it is really repetitive, but it's fun. But for a potential sequel, I would want them to make the challenges feel more unique from one another. The most recent update of Frontiers added these Coco challenges, which are very similar to the memory token courses, but they're much more innovative and challenging, and they feel distinct from one another. If a sequel does happen, then I would want the memory token challenges to be this way, so it doesn't feel too repetitive. Along with that, I think it would be really cool if the memory tokens were actually built into the environment, because they feel like such an afterthought in Frontiers. They're just kind of there with no rhyme or reason. Imagine if all of these obstacles were built into the islands in some way, that would be amazing. But if they want to evolve the formula even more, then I think they should just say fuck it and make a completely open world Sonic game. One gigantic map that has way more objectives than just collecting memory tokens. Just think about it. Imagine a map that is as wide open as Breath of the Wild, where you could just go wherever you want. And as for the different environments on the map, they could take more inspiration from the Sonic series. What if you're running around in a Mystic Ruins-like area with temples, waterfalls, and whatever, but in the distance you see a city, so you think to yourself, okay, I'm going to go explore that, because why not? That is truly my dream Sonic game. But it wouldn't be a good Sonic Frontiers successor without good controls. Now, the controls in Frontiers were really good, but something I would have wanted to see more fleshed out was the combat. Now, don't get me wrong, I think the combat was really fun in this game, but it didn't take much skill. All you have to do is just keep spamming button combinations and watching cutscenes play out. So, for a sequel of the game, I would really want to see this system more fleshed out, make it feel like I'm actually skilled at the game. For one, make the enemies more difficult to defeat, and for two, make it so only certain moves can hit its weak point. Because every guardian in Frontiers had moments where you could just beat the shit out of them, and it was fun, but it was just too easy. Another way to combat this is to not make the moves so broken. If that means nerfing already existing moves or adding a new skill tree with weaker moves, then so be it. But other than that, I think the combat is fine, and really fun, but for a sequel, it definitely needs some changes. Alright, let's talk about cyberspace now, because damn, they need to pretty much completely overhaul it for a sequel. For one, cut the nostalgia bullshit. I don't want to see any more Green Hill, Chemical Plant, Sky Sanctuary, or whatever classic zone. If you're going to rip level environments, then at least change it up a little. Add levels from Sonic Unleashed, Sonic Colors, Sonic Rush even. Why do we have to play through Green Hill multiple times? And that's another issue. Add more environments. Because Frontiers had a total of four cyberspace environments, and that's just not enough. So for the sequel, I would want them to A, not rip level designs from previous games and B, add way more environments. Also, please fix Sonic's physics. I have no idea why they decided to lock his movement and speed in the cyberspace stages. Was there really any reason to do that? I understand not being able to use combat moves or the Psy loop, but come on, why is it such a bitch to turn around a corner of all things? Anyway, cyberspace was a disappointment in Frontiers, but it had so much potential. The concept is there, and with that concept, literally anything is possible. It's a digital dimension. They could have gotten as wacky and creative as they wanted to with this, but but instead, we just got watered-down versions of older Sonic levels. And finally, let's talk about the story. I think it was good in the original game, but it just kind of fell apart near the end. There were a lot, and I mean a lot of lore implications in Frontiers, even hinting at the origins of the Chaos Emeralds, but we never really got a solid conclusion to the story. In fact, it feels like they shoved a lot of it in the final boss, which was awful by the way. But the plot itself just didn't really feel resolved. We still didn't know much about the end and why it wiped out the Ancients, we never discovered why the Coco were linked so much with the Ancients, and we never truly found out what that damn symbol meant. While I don't think the sequel would be a continuation of Frontiers' story, I think it's important for it to have a fully fleshed out plot of its own. Alright, so now that we've discussed
discussed all of the aspects of what I would want to see in a sequel, do I think we will actually get a true Sonic Frontiers 2? And, uh, no. Probably not. Here's the thing. Frontiers laid the groundwork for the foreseeable future of the Sonic series, so it's obvious that the next Sonic game would take that foundation and build upon it, but it's probably not going to be a direct follow-up to Frontiers. Instead, it would just improve upon all these aspects I mentioned in this video, but it would still be a game that would stand on its own. If you want to consider it to be Frontiers 2, then you could, because on a technicality, it is a sequel that uses the same foundation that Frontiers used. I mean, unless they pulled a Lost World. That was a joke. But yeah, guys, that's going to end this video. Let me know what you would want to see in a potential sequel or successor to Sonic Frontiers in the comments down below. But thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you all later. Goodbye.